Commercial real estate videos are brought to you by Bull Realty. When your business requires proven performance, contact Bull Realty. And by Arnold Golden Gregory, France Media Inc., Resnick Group, and Andy's Army. <laughs> Welcome to the Commercial Real Estate Show. Thanks for joining us to lead, learn, and laugh. Learn market knowledge and best practices to lead your company's success. And that's whatever type of company you work with. And laugh, I think we have to have some fun along the way. Well, hello, I'm Michael Bull, your host to the world of commercial real estate. Thanks for joining us. If you have any commercial real estate questions or if you have any comments about the show, we do appreciate hearing from you. Our phone number is 888-612-SHOW. Our email is info at CREshow.com. You can also connect with us through your favorite social media. You'll find them off the show website, commercialrealestateshow.com. Well, today we're going to focus on the U.S. industrial market. Uh, the market has been improving some, and we've got some incredible experts in the studio and on the phone to let you know what's going on. And we'll also get behind the numbers and see uh, what the real factors and fundamentals are that are going to shape the market in the coming year. Uh, let's start with a perspective on the market from Mitch Rochelle, partner, U.S. real estate advisory practice leader with Price Waterhouse Cooper. PwC is a global professional services network with 169,000 professionals worldwide. PwC is the leading professional services network in the world as measured by revenues. Mitch Rochelle, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Michael. Good morning. Well, good morning. So it's uh, beautiful out there in San Diego this morning? Beautiful in San Diego. Sun's coming up, uh, but I'm just looking at a strip center across the street, not the ocean. <laughs> well, it's gorgeous here in Atlanta. Thanks for joining us. Uh, well, Mitch, can you share some data on what's going on in the industrial industry right now? Absolutely. So um, I think a, a great way of framing sort of where we are in, the, in this sector is to look at sort of where we've come from. Uh, so we pulled a little bit of data, and uh, what I want to talk about quickly is the amount of inventory we've added to the, the sector. Um, if you go back to when things were booming in the real estate sector as a whole, uh, from 2003 to 2006, in that four-year period, the industry added um, 632 million square feet of new space. Um, 07, 180 um, million square feet of space. Jumping ahead to 09, 77 million square feet of space. And then here's where it gets interesting. 010, 27 million square feet of space. And in 11, 23 million square feet of space. Wow. So what's happened is um, developers, um, for the obvious reasons, the tenants may not be there, the financing may be there, or vacancies are just too low, have slowed down their, their addition to uh, their portfolios. And that, I think, is setting us up for something good which is a, a rebound in the sector, and I'm sure we'll get into that in some of your following questions. But I thought that that was a good starting point to underpinning to show sort of where we were, where we're going, um, and uh, what the good news is going forward. Well, that's an interesting point. I think the market could turn around a lot faster than some of the tenants uh, realize out there. And let's talk about some of the uh, various types of industrial properties. Uh, have you seen better performance in uh, certain property classes, and what do you expect moving forward there? You, you know, I, you know, we look at it somewhat nationally, and we look at it, you know, v very averaged. But if you think about um, what goes on in um, properties that you would label as industrial, um, clearly there's been a boom in the research and development element of the space. Um, that's a component, subcomponent of the real estate sector as a whole that's really done very well. Um, you know, and if you think about America, we, we don't build a lot of things anymore. Uh, one of the things we do is we build as ideas, and we, the types of ideas we build are generally technology, whether it be biotech, energy technology, or, you know, you know gadget technology. And that's going on in the R&D kind of space. Um, it's inexpensive to build the shell, and the tenant can put as much um, technology inside the box as they like. So that's, that segment has done uh, fairly well. Um, and then if you look at the industrial sector sort of as a whole, and maybe a, a good chart to look at um, that uh, your listeners, those who aren't driving, mind you, um, <laughs> is one that uh, we have which shows the, the rent uh, growth prospects. And, and I'll talk more about 
why rents growing in a second, but um, we just go back a couple of quarters. Um, we produce a survey quarterly um, called the PwC Real Estate Investor Survey, and uh, we talk to about 200 market participants quarterly and get their take on what they think is going to happen in, in the you know the year ahead. So it's a rolling forecast, if you will. And if you look at it, you see in the the most recent quarter, which is uh, the second. Um, the, the sort of the, the end there, we, we see rent growth, you know, shifting a little bit. And uh, I think the, the good news is we're, we're finding ourselves uh, in a recovery. Um, obviously, rent growth isn't as crazy as it was back in 07. Um, but uh, we've got sort of rent growth prospects nonetheless. And what's interesting about looking at that chart is there isn't much difference between the flex R&D and the, the traditional warehouse. So um, while in different markets and different pockets we may see some interesting uh, growth, um, I, I think, you know, holistically across the country, both sub-segments are sort of performing about the same. And let's talk about those different areas around the country. Where do you expect to see the uh, the, the best uh, performance moving forward? Obviously, the industrial um, sub-asset class is all about the supply chain. So, um, obviously, your gateway markets, the, the proximity to, um, 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 you know, the distribution channels, so that's your big interstates. Uh, but what's really interesting is the increase in cost of fuel in the past, um, you know, couple of years has really had the supply chain rethink how we move services, or goods rather, um, from location A to location B. And the rails are becoming a lot more important. And interestingly enough, in some respects, ports um, are becoming more important. So I think the proximity to the rail corridors, the proximity to some ports that um, are a little more cost-effective to operate around are going to be some of the bright spots out there. Okay. What are some of the fundamentals affecting the market uh, uh, this year? Well, I, I think we have a really neat chart up there, um, which is the the rent growth prospects and the tenant retention. Um, so every quarter we talk to our survey participants about uh, their views on tenants and, you know, in their underwriting of investments, do they think, you know, existing tenants are going to stay or go? And uh, we also talk to them about rent growth, uh, you know, year one rent growth. Um, and we're seeing this really nice correlated um, set of lines in a graph that shows that the prospects of tenant retention are rising. So um, if you have a tenant in... The you know, landlords sure. are all clapping around the country, thank you. Right. <laughs> and so the, the, the shopping for, do I want to move to the warehouse across the street, not, not happening as much because that landlord may be, you know, 50 cents less in rent. Um, one of the things that's interesting about a recessionary period is employee pro productivity goes up, which means that we're asking our employees to do more uh, than they used to do because we have less employees. Well, landlords are realizing that tenants don't want to move and put more stress on their workforce. So if tenants are staying put, it's really a great opportunity for landlords to raise rents. And um, we have rent growth, tenants staying. I think that that's the uh, perfect uh, fundamental for a rebound in a, in, a, in a real estate sector. Yeah, that will help. Well, what could affect the market positively or negatively? Um, you know, obviously, uh, if the retail sector, and I'm not talking about retail real estate as much mm -hmm. as I'm talking about uh, retailers in general, mm -hmm. if they really take it on the chin, I think that's going to impact uh, the asset class a bunch because uh, industrial plays a big role in the supply chain there. Um, I think, and if, obviously, if the economy dips into a double dip uh, recession, that's obviously going to impact the, the supply chain and impact the demand for space. Having said all that, I think an interesting thing to reflect on is if you look at the, the aftermath of the earthquake in Japan, tragically, and the tsunami about a year ago, uh, and if you were waiting for your Japanese car to get delivered and you realized it couldn't get delivered, the reason was there was a break in the supply chain. Um, so what in this day and age of just-in-time inventory, I think 
people um, who operate somewhere in the supply chain are realizing that we just need more inventory. And similarly, retailers are realizing that if they don't have inventory on the shelves or they can't get inventory to their customers, they're losing a sale. So with the high level of competition between stick and brick retailers and the internet, um, there's a need to have inventory that can be gotten to customers quickly. So that again, is putting good demand on shelves and warehouses, which is going to drive rents and drive drive occupancy. And lastly, you can't forget about e-commerce. And uh, while traditional stick and brick retailers may be taking it on the chin, e-commerce is not, and the growth there is really uh, phenomenal. And uh, those items, while they may be be being drop-shipped from the direct manufacturer, um, they're in a warehouse someplace. So the demand for those products uh, are out there, and they're in a warehouse, which means somebody's paying rent, which is a good thing for the sector. So I think, obviously, headwinds in the economy could hurt, but I think that the demand for um, goods is still strong. It's still robust, and that is, and we haven't added inventory in the sector. So I think that that's good news for, uh, for occupancy and good news for rents uh, in the years to come. Yeah, I, we have to get the products to the customers. I know I was jumping up and down in the dealership. When my Bentley was delayed. <laughs> it didn't work. It didn't work. That didn't do anything any differently for me. And um, I don't really have a Bentley, <laughs> but uh, maybe that's you, you why. You call your Toyota Bentley. Is that what you <laughs> that's right. I, I call it whatever I want. Right. Well, we're uh, going to have to take a break here, uh, Mitch. If you'll stay with us, uh, we'll talk to you in the second uh, segment. And uh, we'll get more on the U.S. industrial market. I'm Michael Bull, and this is America's Commercial Real Estate Show. We'll be right back. Commercial real estate videos are brought to you by Bull Realty. When your business requires proven performance, contact Bull Realty. And by Arnold Golden Gregory, France Media Inc., Resnick Group, and Andy's Army. Welcome back. I'm Michael Ball, and this is America's Commercial Real Estate Show. If you'd like to know the absolute latest on any commercial real estate subjects or property sectors, check out our show podcast. We just completed a show on the U.S. office market. Be sure to hear a show we did on 1031 exchanges, cost segregation, and self-directed IRAs. If you know some commercial real estate agents, tell them about the shows we did recently with Bob McCombs, Mike Lipsy, and Rod Santomasimo. You can hear these shows while they're still available on iTunes and on the show website, commercialrealestateshow.com. Well, today we're looking at the U.S. industrial market. My guest is Mitch Rochelle with Price Waterhouse Cooper. Uh, Mitch, let's talk about your predictions for 2012. What do you expect to see? Uh, well, you know, as I talked before the break, uh, we're, we're setting up nicely uh, for a recovery. Um, and I thought uh, a, a good chart to sort of illustrate that would be the, the snippet from PwC's real estate barometer. So on a quarterly basis, we take a snapshot of the industry, where it is, and then project out um, the next three years. And we look at uh, every one of the four asset classes in where they are in their sort of life cycle, whether the, it's recessionary, recovery, expansion, or contraction. Um, so 2012 is a continued recovery period. Um, for the asset class um, and the beginning of an expansion. So we haven't really seen expansion, as I talked before the break, in several years. Um, And I think we're setting up for a little bit of an expansion um, in 2012 and then 13 and 14, really a a bit of a mini explosion in the expansion of the the sector. And really by 2014, totally coming out of the any part of uh, recessionary. So recessionary is rents falling, um, recovery is rent stabilizing, and uh, expansion is uh, adding new products and, and continued rent growth. So um, that's where I see uh, us in 2012, really at the transition point from uh, being in a recessionary period to uh, moving towards uh, an expansionary period. Well, that's good news, and I certainly like the explosion idea. Of that, explosion uh, in a good way. That's right. That's a great. Well, well, how will that affect the investment market in 2012? What do you expect to see there in the industrial world? Um, well, listen, we, you know, in 11, we saw a fair amount of M&A activity in the, in the sector amongst the REITs, um, and uh, I think uh, we're going to see a big 
uh, a noticeable pickup in transaction volume in, in 2012. I think a, a good reason for that and a good way of looking at it is to look at where the cap rate is. Um, and one of the slides that I talked about before the break, you know, showed, you know, cap rates uh, compressing. Um, cap rate compression is a phenomena that is when there's more capital chasing an asset class than there is product that's being sold. Um, but, you know, cap rate compression side, if you look at where the cap rate is right now, you know, it's just under 750, uh, so it's about 740. So if you think about where treasuries are and you think about the historical stability of the industrial asset class and then you reflect on sort of the frothiness of, of um, the apartment sector and how, in some respects, the office sector is getting a little frothy with some cap rates dropping there. You know, a 740 basis point return cash on cash seems pretty good on a risk-adjusted basis. So I think when investors reflect on the economics of industrial, the fact that tenant improvement costs in industrial aren't what they are in the um, um, office sector, the fact that if you have some adjacent land to your property and the tenants want to expand, you can very easily build new space for them and grow revenue. I think it's really a, a, a neat little niche in the overall commercial real estate sector that often gets underlooked because maybe it's not overlooked, rather, because it's not as sexy as some of the other um, property types, but it's got a great yield. And, and I think that that's going to be the catalyst for a big pickup in um, transaction volume uh, starting in 2012 and continuing thereafter. Yeah, I agree. I think it's a favored asset class moving forward. Well, we heard the uh, president speak uh, this week, uh, a rousing speech it was. And so what do you think about the presidential election results? How might that affect the uh, market moving forward? Um, listen, I, I think that um, election periods come and go. It happens every four years. And if you were to look at the volatility in the real estate asset class over time with other, you know, hard-fought elections, you'll find that the real estate investors sort of shrug all that off. It's only when there is some big um, regulatory change that could, you know, recalibrate the landscape for financing um, or could recalibrate the landscape for, you know, tax advantages of investing in real estate. Those are the only things that sort of Washington has really done um, if you look at real estate over time, and I'm old enough to, to, to do that, um, that have really changed, you know, an election has really changed the real estate space. Um, so I don't think investors are really looking at it um, and holding off on making a decision because uh, they don't know if uh, it's going to be, you know, Obama re being reelected or or you know, fill in the blank, Republican being elected, I think investors are going to plow through and not focus on what's going on uh, in November. And if they see an opportunity to buy something, they're going to buy it. If they're looking to sell and somebody wants to buy it, they're going to sell and they're not going to pay much attention to the noise in, in politics. Um, so, and, but if there was, if there was uh, policy talk about something that could impact the asset class, I think that that may cause, um, uh, investors to pause, but I haven't heard anything, uh, and uh, I don't suspect we'll see anything. Yeah, well, those are good points. It'll be interesting to see what corporate America does, though, and in, in their decisions to expand and in, invest uh, on the tenant side and the occupancy side. Well, Mitch, uh, can you give us some advice or tips for our listeners uh, related to the industrial market? Um, I, I would, I would say my biggest tip is, um, you know, be bullish. Um, it's, um, it, it's, it's a component of real estate asset class that uh, um, often gets talked about last because, as I said a while ago, it's not sexy. But I, I would look at it, and I'd also look at um, where, where a property is relative to distribution channels um, and where a property is relative to being able to expand um, the holdings. So mo most of your industrial is often in a, in a park kind of setting. And if you're, you can buy a property um, that has some expansion land in the, in the mix um, and you can get that land very inexpensively, I would look at that property over one that, you know, didn't have expansion land. Um, because the one thing to remember is while we're coming out of this, you know, the down 
part of the cycle for income-producing assets, we're still really in the, the real low point of the cycle as it relates to land. And this may be in buying industrial in, in, in a park setting, you may be able to pick up land virtually for nothing as part of the, um, the acquisition and get the income from the, uh, the properties that are constructed to help, uh, car- help you carry that land over time. Um, that would be my, my tip for your listeners. Um, you may find an industrial an ability, which you wouldn't find in office, you wouldn't find in retail, and you're, you're certainly not going to find a multifamily to be able to get land, not for free, but for a really, really low price relative to where it's been trading in, in, in earlier in the cycles. Okay. Well, that's good advice. And Mitch Rochelle, as usual, great information. Thanks for joining us today. Always a pleasure, Michael. Look forward to coming back. Thank you. If you like more information from Price Waterhouse Cooper, their website and contact information is available for you at commercialrealestateshow.com. Well, after a quick break, we'll get more on the U.S. industrial market. I'm Michael Bull, and this is America's Commercial Real Estate Show. We'll be right back. <laughs> 